Hello there. Do you have a business analyst interview coming up shortly? If so, this is one of the videos for you. This is the latest video in the business analyst interview question and answer series. I provided the link to all the other videos in the series in the description box below. You can go check it out. In this video, we're going to discuss the differences between waterfall and agile and also we'll touch upon which one is better. So these two questions are the commonly asked the interview questions in the recent past and in this video we're going to address that but before we go into address these questions i want to take a case study and see how it would be delivered through a waterfall and also how it would be delivered through an agile methodology so you will get a side by side view of these two models and you will be able to get a deeper understanding of these models and you can easily you will be able to see the differences and understand it when we talk about the differences so we have a lot to cover uh, let's get started but before that if you're new to our youtube channel then i would highly recommend you to click on the subscribe uh, button to subscribe to your youtube channel and also the bell icon so that you'll be notified when we post the next videos Okay, so uh, I think let's get started. We have a lot to cover. This is going to be a slightly bigger video than usual, but I made it comprehensive so that after this video, you will be able to easily articulate what is waterfall, uh, what, are, what are the components in waterfall model, agile model, the key differences and which one is better and you'll be able to ace the interview. So please stay tuned. As always, we'll use a case study so in this case study, a restaurant called ABC Cuisines is looking for an online home delivery service for their restaurant. We have covered this uh, case study in the previous videos, but I think it's a very simple case study and we can see how this online home delivery service can be delivered using the waterfall and agile methodologies. So the high level features which has been requested by the restaurant are these. So like list of 12. So there are seven customer facing requirements, uh, starting off with registration and login, uh, then grouping of the food items by categories and the ability for the customers to search for the food, I food for online ordering and then ability to add or remove items from the cart and then online payment card, internet banking, wallet. So this online application should support online payment via these models. And then once the customer has ordered for their food, then they should be able to do uh, tracking. Uh, where is it? What is the status? Uh, what is the ETA? And then if there's any issues, they can raise a query or a problem pro issue using the app itself through the support feature. So these are the customer side features which the restaurant is looking for and then there is a staff side so staff side involves having a staff portal to man uh, the orders which have been uh, provide you know or by ordered by the customer then there should be an order alert to inform that there's a new order and then the manager can assign it to the uh, staff chef to get all get the food ready and then uh, if there's any uh, issues uh, addressed by the customers, so that support, uh, a staff side support portal, you know, should allow for them to address all those uh, issues raised by the customer. And then once the food is, you know, like ready, when it's being uh, delivered to the customer, the app should have a GPS navigation for the, you know, the delivery person to know where the address is so they can use the navigation to uh, locate and uh, deliver the food. So these are just the high level features which uh, you know the restaurant is looking for. So let's see how uh, these would be delivered uh, first off in the waterfall model and then we will look at the same in the agile model and then we will look at the differences. Okay, let's let's look at the waterfall methodology in detail now. As you see in the diagram, this depicts the stages of a waterfall and waterfall methodology. And as you can see, it kind of looks like a waterfall and it's a top uh, down approach. So we have the requirements phase followed by design phase, then build, test and deployment phases. It's a top down approach. 
so it can flow unidirectional so there's no way it can like you know loop back so that's one of the constraint with the waterfall methodology okay let's see what what are the details in the each phases have so first off is requirements so that this phase basically involves the um, the re requirement gathering or requirements elicitation sessions and documentation so first off uh, again it the the business this would be a key area for the business analyst to do a stakeholder uh, identification and mapping and then having requirement elicitation session with those stakeholders so it can be from a customer facing view staff facing view so you can talk to the restaurant owner uh, talk to the people uh, front and uh, you know people or wait waiters to understand uh, the customer view further and also you can speak to the back end uh, operations or manager uh, you know the back end people to understand what all the details they need in the staff portal so this would be a, a series of uh, uh, sessions it can be workshops it can be one on one interviews it can be observations uh then you can be prototype sessions you can show this to the sponsor or, or the owner of the restaurant this is how it's going to be what is the color what is the look and feel so all of uh, those things you know are part of the elicitation sessions uh so there will be multiple sessions to go over and come up with the requirements so a product of the elicitation session is the first document a key deliver for a business analyst in the waterfall methodology is the brd which is a business requirement document again um the the purpose of this document is to capture the business requirements and the context so basically it will have uh, a business context about this whole project why it's being done what are the business benefits and then what is required this brd talks about what are the requirements so this covers those uh, 12 features which we talk about at a very high level uh, talk about so there would be a, um, one requirement for each of those features so for example like a business requirement one will be the login uh, customer should uh, you know should be able to register and log in to the online application business requirement number two could a uh, customer should be able to to you know uh, add or delete um, the food item using this app or the online order so so forth and uh, it will go on with br3 br4 and each of those online payment requirements uh, the tracking requirements all of those will get documented uh, in the in the business in the brd again it's just the what it won't have Uh, much details it's again a high level but all the business requirements would be captured from all the different stakeholders either be the customer facing or the staff facing uh, so all of those uh, requirements would be captured and this would be again uh, shared with those stakeholders for their review and sign off once this brd is signed off the next major deliverable from a business analyst perspective would be the frd which is a functional requirement document so this talks about how so the the brd was basically what and a functional requirement document will be how so this will kind of dictate how the system should work so if we look at the add or delete uh, items from the Uh, food items using this online application so that requirement let's say it was br4 it would be mapped to maybe a for four or a for again it depends on the order it can be further broken broken down basically uh, it can be like uh, one uh, functional requirement would be uh, the ability for the customer to add and the other requirement may let's say would be for the customer to remove it from their cart and it can have uh, use cases which we have discussed in the previous video it can have uh, the mock ups which is created just to uh, provide a view to the development team how it should basically work and any other uh, mapping what are the fields it should have so all those details will kind of go into the functional requirement document uh, activity diagrams so all of those whichever which will support uh which are making the requirement clear for the development team so again it will have 
fr01 02030305 and it'll have all the functional requirements related to all the features which we talked about from tracking to online uh, payments everything so all of those would be in the functional requirement document again it's a very it'll be a very big document i would say 20 25 pages it should it will be more comprehensive and also it will uh, cap uh, categorize and uh, sorry uh, it will also capture the non-functional requirements so it will talk about the performance requirements let's say customer clicks on a button the system should respond within one or two seconds security feature so all of those non-functional requirements would also be listed down in the uh, functional requirement document so again uh, this is another key deliverable uh, for a business analyst in the waterfall methodology and then once this is uh, drafted it again needs to be sent to all the stakeholders for their review and approval. So once that is signed off, approved and signed off, that kind of completes the first phase in this model, the requirement phase, and now the flow goes to the design design phase. So in the design phase, the input would be the functional requirement document. Also, BRD would be provided to give much more context to the design team. So it, it would be usually the solution designers or the technical architects or the senior technical leads who will be involved here and they will consume all the requirements and uh, this may involve uh, walkthrough by the business analyst to those uh, uh, teammates uh, just to un, uh, you know clarify to them what the requirement is or walk through the requirements to them and based on that they create um, something called tss again it can be known by different names technical specification uh, or uh, technical design document basically different names for it but the 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 con content of it would be the design so what are the technical details or technical design architecture required in order for uh, you know the system to you know satisfy those uh, functional requirements so that is what would be in this uh, technical design or technical specification uh, document so this is again uh, another kind of a phase so this also needs to be reviewed so be a business analyst would be reviewing this to ensure that all of the things which uh, was you know in the FRD is covered or not if there's any missing things this is a place to identify so the technical specification contains again uh, the uh, infrastructure required the database is required and also it will have some kind of a pseudo code so it all varies from project to project company to company so there's no standard for it but again the concept is pretty simple it, this is a design to deliver the functional requirements so that is kind of the phase number two in this uh, waterfall methodology so once the again the technical document is reviewed and signed off then we go into the third third phase which is the build phase in this phase is where the developers would be doing their coding uh, looking at the technical specification document uh, or technical specifications so basically this is where they will be writing the programs be it in cobol java dot net python whatever it is um, but this is this is how this is the phase where they will be developing all their uh, programs and then once it is done they will be doing the unit testing so they would be ensuring that uh, with the code they've developed is working fine whether it satisfies all the requirements for example again addition and deletion so adding a food item from the app should basically add it to the cart and when you click on delete button it should delete it from the cart so basic test case they will be checking whether you know it's working fine similarly uh, the registration again so all of those uh, features which we spoke about online payment uh, tracking support everything would be developed and then again they would be kind of unit tested to ensure that everything is working fine so once this is done unit testing is completed then this phase gets of gets completed and then it goes to the fourth phase which is the testing so there are, there are two types of testing one is the system integration testing sit it's done by the testers uh, the the qas uh, how we call it so they will be again referring to the uh, frds and they would be creating uh, they would have created their uh, test cases test scripts and they would be 
doing the test to ensure that everything works fine as per the requirement uh, functional requirements whether the system is behaving fine whether the let's say tracking is working fine when you create a support whether it's coming up with a, a box to capture the support uh, a customer's uh, query or an issue and when they click submit whether that is reflecting in the staff portal so they will do all the testing of all the requirements to ensure it's all fine and they will also do the integration uh, between one testing between one system to other system whether the front end is talking to the back end uh, whether the records are getting created in the database so all those integration testings would be checked by them and once that is completed then we go into the next uh, sub phase you call it which is uat which is a user acceptance testing in this phase the end users would be involved so the people who had given the requirement uh, who were part of the elicitation sessions so they would be involved in testing to make sure whether it's all fine uh, like say manager in the in the firm will be checking whether once the, once the order comes in whether they're able to see it in the portal they're getting an alert uh, all those things which whatever the features they have requested they will be able to check and also the person who gave the customer facing requirement uh, it may be the sponsor or it may be someone else uh, where, who's dealing with the customer on day to day. They will check whether all the, f the requirements they're given uh, is is coming fine as per, you know, their uh, their uh, their, uh, their uh, idea of the whole thing, how it should work. So here the business analyst would be again helping them in their testing, uh, supporting them, maybe help providing some uh, test scripts and if they have any questions kind of supporting them there to kind of you know ensure everything works fine again in both phases it and uat if the code does not work according to the requirement then a defect will be logged and it will be assigned to the development team which they will resolve it and then one, uh, the defect will get retested fixed and deployed so once everything is complete as all the requirements which has been asked has been delivered and tested that would kind of complete the testing phase and then the last phase would be deployment to the production system so this is where the whole uh, application which has been developed will go live and will be accessible for the end users the staff side also the customer side so this was an online application so all those things will go into a website once this gets deployed all the 12 features which we saw uh, right from login registration uh, searching for a food item adding deleting from the cart online payment trust tracking support all those features from the customer end would be available for the customer if they kind of access the abc cuisines website uh, online uh, home ordering home delivery service so all of those will be visible for them to do it similarly there will be a staff portal where they the staff can log in they will be able to see the orders uh, any support queries and uh, also the person who is delivering the app would be able to do the jeep you know able to see the live tracking uh, customers address and you can use the maps to navigate and deliver the the food so all of those 12 features which would have been uh, requested would have been delivered and it would be deployed to production so this is the last phase it completes the cycle just giving you some idea of the timelines because we would need this for a comparison later with agile methodology again uh, our you know just a guesstimate uh, just for demonstration purpose it may take less or it may take more but just for demonstration pur purposes requirements you know it might take two months because we have multiple sessions with the stakeholders and brd and frd are really uh, heavy documents a lot of pages a lot of information needs to go there so just giving a rough estimate of two months and then the design document again just giving uh, 15 days for it since we have all the requirements the architects or the designers might be able to do it quickly it can be extended but again for our example let's give it 15 days and then uh, the double the build process coding and unit testing can be two months uh, to ho do the whole thing and then testing can be one and a half months like 20 days for SIT and 20 25 days for UAT uh, which if you do all those things and which deployment can be will be done usually on the weekend it's, it's a one or one one weekend activity if you put together everything 
the whole process takes six months from the inception so from the day when the business uh, decides to be needed and they engage uh, a delivery partner can be one of those uh, you know it companies at a high level it takes six months and the requirements which were kind of decided at the beginning will have to see through the whole thing they won't they cannot there cannot be any changes so let's say something changed uh, in month three they wanted a different feature uh, let's say they wanted to have um, I mean, uh, like a mobile wallet in uh, integration, which was uh, one of the new wallets have come up and they want to integrate it into the system, like say wallet Air XYZ. They cannot do that in this model because already the requirements are frozen and it's going on. Only way you can do that is raising a change request. So that will st uh, still delay the timelines. It can be if it's a very small change, but it can be a couple of days. But if it's a little substantial change, like integration to the new wallet, building of the service so API, all those things, it may be like a delay of 15 days. And that delay would be sh uh, instead of project completing in six months, it would be uh, six and a half months. So that is one of the constraints of this uh, waterfall model. And uh, the requirements has to be crystal clear for this model to really work. So uh, given a, a quick uh, uh, walkthrough of the waterfall model in the next slide let's look at the agile version how the agile will can be used to deliver the same same um, develop the same application okay let's look at the agile methodology now again it all starts off with the elicitation stakeholder identification and elicitation how we uh, discussed in the waterfall so the elicitation sessions would be similar or uh, workshops uh, interviews observations you know prototyping to come up with the list of requirements in agile the requirements are captured in the form of epics and user stories and they are documented and the collective requirements is called as a product backlog so this is one major um, a document I would say uh, which would have a list of all the epics and user stories basically the requirements and this would be used uh, to deliver the whole lot there is no BRD there's no uh, FRD so the the key thing here is the product backlog and uh, I've, I've created uh, uh, different uh, videos on epics and user stories how to do the uh, create them in Jira I would link them in the description if you want to look at it you can feel free to look at that uh, and you know get a better understanding of creating epics and use stories so again this is very similar to waterfall elicitation product uh, followed by the creation of requirements in the product backlog and then this is the agile uh, methodologies you know kind of a life cycle so it is an iterative based model but again it follows the similar thing what we saw and the waterfall the requirements followed by the design build test and deployment so it, it it the the phase the phases or the activities remain similar but the key difference is it is iterative so what would happen here is uh, this this is called a sprint so what would happen is from the product backlog the top five top features or five features of the business value would be selected and would would go through this cycle so what i mean is um in waterfall we have to wait until the complete feature set is developed for it to be available to the customers and the staff end users but in this agile we can identify those minimum uh, set of requirements which is called a minimum viable product or mvp and then once that is done it can be delivered to the customer so for an for our example here uh, the minimum viable product or MVP is first off uh, login registration for a customer and then uh, adding and you know removing the items from the cart and then making an online order so and once they make an online order we can have an email triggered to the manager email alert uh, stating what are the uh, what are the items the customers have ordered and what where is the address so with this we can 
kind of go live with the product. It's a minimum um, um, set of features uh, allowing the customer to make an online order and the staff to get the information and to go and deliver the 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 ordered items so if you see the whole whole uh, mindset change here uh, we're not going for full-fledged delivery at one shot we're going to first deliver of the minimum uh, minimum set of features and then get started off with it so it's available to the customers and the customers can start using it uh, staff can start you know uh, servicing through the online delivery and then on an iterative basis add more features to the tool so with this approach, uh, you know, like once the sprint backlog is kind of finalized with those five features, which we spoke about the minimum ones. And then after that, there's no kind of documents required in all the phases. So ideally the user stories and epics would be created in Jira's and then in the subsequent uh, Jira items, tasks would be created for design, uh, development, build, uh, test, and also um, you know for all the other the scrum team members basically to do their activities a certain task would be created so for design certain task would be created um, like infrastructure requirements to get the database set up similarly for build which is the same in the diff the programs it can be java cobol whatever it is python so all those programs would be created and there will be tasks created for you know each programs to be developed or amendment to the uh, existing program so those are all tracked through task linked to the user stories similarly the testing requirement also would be a task and it would be managed in the in, in a in this way so and there, would, there will be a kanban board which will have to do in progress done so these tasks will be moved from to do to in progress and done so once everything is completed then we go for the deployment so in, again as we stated deployment of those five minimum features this when we say deploy here this deployment means it is available to the end user the customer so if they go to the website after this deployment they can go out log in register and they would be able to add or remove food, uh, food items from the order and they can make an online delivery. Uh, there won't be any other online payment, but they can pay by cash uh, from the customer perspective. At least they are able to get uh, you know, the food items delivered to their home uh, without having to visit the restaurant. So this is the kind of a mind, sh a mind shift or a, a methodology change from a, a waterfall to agile. Agile focuses on frequent deliveries uh, and uh, getting the product out there so that in case if uh, just to see what is adoption uh, with this let's say customer starts ordering well and good it, it is alignment with the vision of the restaurant if you have an online application the customers would order online for own delivery service but in case if they don't order there's no turnout then there would be some corrections required. So those kind of things can be identified early with Agile. And that's one of the key uh, benefit of using Agile. So let's continue this journey. So this would be sprint one, five features. And then the subsequent features like online payment um, and the minimums and you know, the staff portal, all those things would be repeated in the subsequent cycle called like sprint two. It will be similar there would be a certain item is moved from product backlog to the sprint backlog and then the whole cycle will repeat design build test and deployment and the 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 four features would, which would have been developed uh, sorry which would have been decided for this particular sprint would be developed uh, uh, tested and deployed to production so now at this moment once this really uh, once this deployment happens now the customer would be able to see an online payment in their uh, once they once they've made an order when they click on submit button there will be an option for them to pay online either using debit card credit cards mobile wallets internet banking so that's how in an iterative fashion the the application is built up one by one and then on the staff side they will be able to instead of getting an email they will be able to see the order in the portal and then they can take action accordingly and similarly sprint three remaining set of features would be uh, 
um, you know developed and deployed in the same um, cycle and then we'll have the complete uh, list of features the 12 features which we spoke about which will be available to the customer now uh, you know this would be like the remaining features like the tracking and the staff will have a gps tracking for navigation to the delivery uh, site so this is the end to end cycle using an agile methodology again at a high level so if you just look at the timelines for comparison with waterfall uh, elicitation and product backlog might still take a month because you need to have multiple sessions with the uh, business stakeholders you know frontline staff operations uh, the backend operations team again uh, of you know back in uh, so it'll it'll take some time it'll be multiple sessions but the only benefit here is it is not document heavy agile is very light so all you have to all you know the business analyst from a bba perspective is to capture the requirements in form of epics and user stories and it's not as document heavy as creating a brd or an frd so that's the reason there will be a uh, sig a significant reduction in the requirement documentation time so i'm just giving it one month again these are all just a example timelines it can be more or less in real time uh, but just to give a uh, illustrate this example i'm just choosing choosing a month and then sprints are usually uh, two weeks to a month and uh, it can have multiple sprints uh, before uh, a release is deployed to production so let's say um, just to giving a perspective it can take two sprints before the product really hits the uh, customer or you know it's deployed to production but for our example we'll keep it simple one sprint is a month and after a sprint the product is shipped and available to the end user and you know the customer as well so having that in mind uh, five features can be developed within a month again just a guesstimate uh, just for illustration purposes so what this does is uh, if you had seen in waterfall it took six months for the product end product to be available to the customer and to the staff end user but it again it had everything but it took six months in agile the same you know the if you look at this in the second month of you know, inception of this idea it is available to the customers but again it's not a full feature set but the basic thing or which which is a core online um, ordering uh, service is available for the customer to order so that's how the that's the key difference agile offers uh, you know the faster time to market so as i was telling in case if if there is a, like let's say customers order volume increases well and good even it would be same 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 thing in uh, waterfall but let's say nobody is ordering there must be a problem like customer don't want to go through the website or they they were looking for an app instead of a, a, a website ordering system so these kind of things would be uh, these uh, feedbacks from the uh, from the market would be uh, easily available in agile methodology and then you can course correct so rather than developing uh, let's say the next four features uh, if the if the market is looking for the customers are looking for a mobile app instead of a online application then the next print uh, the target can be creating that app with the same basic features so that's how you can course correct in agile the requirements can change uh, and uh, every sprint there is a because the requirements are taken from the product backlog to the sprint backlog at that time the highest priority items from the product backlog can be taken to the sprint so there's a flexibility for uh, change in requirements uh, easily without any uh, you know implications to the cost or timelines which was not the case in uh, the waterfall so that's that's why agile is a much more flexible model so this is a, a you know high level view of an agile um, hope you can see the differences between both these uh, models in the next slide we'll just look at the key key differences i just want to call out and uh, we will also talk about which is better that's the next question they would uh, the interviewer would ask okay coming to the question which was 
uh, initially uh, you know we started off the video with which is what are the differences between waterfall and agile because before coming to this i wanted to give a view of what waterfall is what agile is and then we can look at the key differences because it will make much more sense now rather than starting off with the differences so the first uh, uh, difference is like waterfall um, is useful or used when the requirements are very clear so if we know we need xyz then waterfall is the best thing to do but if you're not sure what the requirements are then agile is the best thing to do as we as we spoke about uh, after every sprint you can get the feedback from the end users and based on that you can course correct so that is why agile is used when you're not sure what the requirements are how which way to progress but if for example if the requirements are very clear um, let's say it's a regulatory project or a report needs to be created or migration from uh, one system to another system so at that time we kind of clearly know what the requirement is and that time waterfall can be used instead of agile and the second difference is, is as you have seen is the in in terms of the documentation waterfall was very heavy in documentation so from requirements it had brd frds uh, then we had the technical specifications tsts and also there would be a detailed test plan test scripts uh, for uh, for the test cases so it's a very uh, heavy documentation so a lot of time is spent in the documentation part of it the review and sign offs on the other hand agile is very light in documentation so it's basically the main thing is your product backlog uh, and the epics and user stories and then your sprint backlog where the same things are moved from product backlog to sprint backlog and then for so if you see it's it's very light in terms of documentation and uh, which will help to progress faster because agile believes in conversation among the team members uh, rather than the documentation part of it so that's one of the key aspect of agile which will you know uh, help in saving some time and the third key difference is in the terms of delivery approach so i was just stating let's say if you're doing a, a migration from one system to other system it's usually a big bang approach meaning everything would be migrated to the next system and then we start operating from the new system let's say from legacy uh, le legacy to a modern application usually it's done in a big bang you move everything from your legacy into your modern um, all the data to your modern application and then you start off with it uh, and agile is used for delivering frequently so agile is used for as we uh, the example which we uh, took for this case study is a perfect example for agile uh, because we don't know what the market is uh, what the requirements can be refined so it's used in for you know app development and uh, where there is a frequent need for upgrades so in that uh, space agile is used but if it's a big bang or a kind of a regulatory requirement you know we have to deliver a report then all of those things if you need to uh, deliver one shot big bang is used uh, sorry uh, waterfall is used and the fourth difference is uh, difference is the in terms of risk uh, if as we uh, saw in the case study we develop everything at the end of six months we find out that customer customers do not want an online application but they want a web app then all the effort money spent time spent is is gone in waste so all the six months effort is gone in waste and that's why it's a risky risky kind of a bet but if you use agile in the same example in month two only we would come to know uh, kind of what the customers ask is whether they are liking it and it will help to course correct so month three onwards if we find out that they don't want an online application the customers want a web app all the subsequent development will be on the web app so a lot of money and effort and time was saved so that's why it makes the approach makes agile less risky and the last kind of key key difference i want to point out is um, uh, there's no flexibility in changes in requirement in waterfall so once uh, you know we move from requirement to design and you know design to build subsequently if there's any change in requirement that comes at that place it won't be entertained you need to raise a change request 
go through the approvals and then the same thing needs to follow on from design to build etc etc but in agile we have a flexibility and uh, as as i was stating in the previous slide every sprint would be taking uh, the requirements from the product backlog again the highest value items so if there's any changes it can be amended and then the next sprint it can be kind of picked up and agile allows uh, for the requirement changes uh, you know, so there's no fuss about it in the agile side of things. So these are the key key differences, I would say. But there are much more differences. But these are the key differences, and I just wanted to kind of uh, uh, highlight those and uh, stop it here. But if you want to further understand much more differences, you can um, check out stuff on the net. But I think these are the key differences uh, which you can tell the interviewer. And there, these are the answers they are basically expecting. Okay, coming coming to the second part of the question. So the first part would be what are the uh, differences between waterfall and agile? And the second part of the question, sometimes the interviewer ask again commonly asked is which is better? Is waterfall better or agile better? So there is no uh, you know one answer to it. Uh, you cannot tell agile is better or you cannot tell waterfall is better my view or my take on it is it depends on the circumstances or the scenario of the project which you are dealing with so let's say if there's a project which we don't know what the requirements are you know it's not very clear at the moment then you have to go with we would uh, you know i would recommend agile so you can tell you know we would recommend agile uh, but if it's very clear uh, again you can go to waterfall similarly if the delivery has to happen in big bang uh, like migration then waterfall is better and if it's an iterative thing minor releases uh, adding value to the customer agile is better so again the diff the it depends on the circumstances and the scenario which will kind of dictate which is better for that particular project so this answer is what um, I see it's a best fitted answer because you won't be knowing which project you'll be dealing on and you cannot use you know what for a big bang let's go agile it will be a complete failure similarly if you don't know what the requirements are then we go with kind of uh, agile and it so it again depends on the scenario so I, I feel this is the best answer for this particular question and then um, you can subs you can basically uh, if the if the uh, interviewer does not ask about the differences you just ask which is better uh, you can provide uh, this answer and then uh, supplement it with the differences which we spoke about and take out some examples as we spoke about in the previous slide so that brings us to the end of this video i know it's a little longer video than what we usually put out but i just wanted it to be more comprehensive because this is one of the question asked in most of the interviews and they would expect uh, you know your take on it so i've, I've hopefully i've covered it and um, thanks again once again for watching this video till the till the end as usual um, I, I hope you have enjoyed this video if so please go ahead and subscribe to our channel if you have not already done so we post uh, videos regularly on uh, interview business analyst interview preparation techniques tools etc etc it's a more dead channel dedicated for the business analyst to, you know to become a better ba and the second part of it i would request you is there is a link uh, where a we have consolidated all this business analyst interview question and answers into a PDF. You can click on it, download it, and uh, use it. Refer it before you go to the interview. So this this would be like a quick refresher, and we are basically uh, increasing it on a weekly basis. Whenever we make videos on uh, interview pre pre preparation, we up append it to those. Recommend, highly recommend you download it and uh, start using it. Start re referring to this uh, playlist and to the in, uh, the guide before you go to an interview. I'll pretty much make sure most of the questions uh, which is asked in the in interview will be covered here and you will be able to easily ace the interview. So until next time, thanks once again for watching this video till the end. Until next time, have a great day and all the best for your upcoming interviews.